The antecedent and the consequent are two different component propositions that go into making the compound proposition called the conditional. In this exercise, we're asked to identify what are the antecedents and what are the consequents of the following propositions. How are we gonna identify these? Well, once again, let's look at our definitions. Remember that a conditional is a two-place connective. It puts two different propositions together. And we're gonna say that this conditional, this compound proposition is false if the antecedent is true and the consequent is false, and otherwise it's true. And we said what's unique about this connective is that it matters which component is which. Let's see in the following ones if we can figure out which one is the antecedent and which one is the consequent. Number one, if that's pistachio ice cream, then it don't taste like it should. Which one is the antecedent and which one is the consequent? Well, this proposition is saying that its first component, that is pistachio ice cream, that can't be true without the second component, it don't taste like it should, also being true. So the first one is the antecedent, the second one is the consequent. And typically in these conditionals, it's an if A then B, A is the antecedent, B is the consequent. Number two, that tastes the way it should only if that's not pistachio ice cream. Now in the last video, I talked about this only if. For I said it, it makes things a little bit different. You say A only if B, what you really mean is if A then B. But let's look at this one and see what makes sense. Does this mean that if that tastes the way it should, then it must be the case that that is not pistachio ice cream? Or does it mean that if that isn't pistachio ice cream, then it tastes the way it should? Now that can't be right, right? It can't be the case that that isn't pistachio ice cream and yet it must taste the way it should. No, it must be the other way, the first the way that we talked about it. The antecedent is that tastes the way it should. The consequent is it isn't pistachio ice cream. Number three, if that is supposed to taste that way, then it isn't pistachio ice cream. This one is pretty straightforward. The antecedent is that is supposed to taste that way. The consequent, that isn't pistachio ice cream. Number four, if you press the red button, then that is coffee in your cup. This is another straightforward one, right? It's one of those if-then statements. The antecedent is you press the red button. The consequent is that is coffee in your cup. Number five, your cup does not contain coffee if you press the green button. Now I talked about the difference between A only if B and A if B in the last video. Saying A only if B, we talked about being if B then A, but saying A if B, right? Remember that if B is pretty much just like shifting it from the front to the back. You would say if B then A, or you could just shift it in the back A if B. But let's figure out what makes sense here. Are we saying that if your cup doesn't contain coffee, then you press the green button? Mm, that doesn't seem to make sense, right? It doesn't seem like we're claiming that your cup not containing coffee means that you must have pressed the green button and maybe you press the blue button or something, right? But what about this? If you press the green button, then your cup does not taste co contain coffee? Yeah, that seems to be right. So the antecedent here, you press the green button. The consequent, your cup does not contain this coffee. In other words, remember, we're saying that if you press the green button, if that is true, then the consequent, your cup does not contain coffee, must also be true. Number six, your cup contains hot chocolate only if you press the green button. Again, it's one of those A only if Bs. So we know already that it's gonna be if A then B, but let's see what makes sense. Does it make sense to say, are we claiming here that if you have hot chocolate in your cup, then it must be the case that you would push the green button? Or are we claiming here that if you push that green button, then you must have hot chocolate in your cup? This one's a little bit more difficult to see, but it's really the former one. You're claiming that if that thing in your hot, you're claiming that if that thing in your cup is hot chocolate, you must have pushed the green button. If that first one is true, then that second one has to be true. That's really the claim that's going on here. A only if B means if A then B. That's all we've got for conditionals. And again, I know conditionals are confusing. If you have questions, please hit me up in the comments. I'd love to answer them. But if not, please go on to the next one, 1 1.6.5 by conditionals. Actually, this one is going to be a lot easier than conditionals. Once you get conditionals, by conditionals are walk in the park.